Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to the Maths Olympiad Challenge. Get ready to put your mathematical skills to the ultimate test as we dive into a challenging and exciting test paper question. Are you up for the challenge? Let's sharpen our minds and embark on this mathematical adventure together. A circle gamma has radius 1. A line L is such that the perpendicular distance from L to the center of gamma is strictly between 0 and 2. A frog chooses a point on gamma whose perpendicular distance from L is less than 1 and sits on that point. It then performs a sequence of jumps, and each jump has length 1, and if a jump starts on gamma, it must end on L and vice versa. So prove that after some finite number of jumps, the frog returns to a point it has never been on before. So this is the problem about a jumping frog. So the frog is initially resident on a circle at a point of its choosing, which is the distance of less than one. So let's go ahead and present this in a diagram. So we know the distance is less than one on this vertical line and the radius of the circle is also one. Now, the frog is going to jump from between the circle and the line. Alternatively, always jumping at the distance of exactly one. So where it can, not returning back home. So the point of the problem is to show that eventually the frog is forced to return to a point where he previously visited. And what's going to happen is that he's going to go back to his original launch point. So the secret of getting this problem correct is by drawing a very accurate diagram with a compass and a ruler. But if you draw it freehand, it does prove to be a little bit more difficult. But anyhow, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the frog is at A, jumps to the line to B, and jumps back from B to C. And again, you can see the dotted lines are also a distance of one. So you may know that a quadrilateral where the sides have all equal lengths must be a rhombus, and it's a parallelogram where all the sides being equal. So we've got a rhombus from A to B, C to O. So that's this position here, that's our rhombus. Now the frog has not revisited the original launch point. So off it goes again. So we're going from C. We know it's come from B, so from C it's going to go directly to D. And then again, you can go from D to E. And again, as you can see with the same reasons before, we've got another rhombus, which is what I've just highlighted. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that drawing this accurately is really important. So again, this is not drawn to scale, but just to confirm that AB and OC are parallel, mainly because, because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram, and OC is parallel to ED, again, they're opposite sides to a parallelogram. Therefore, if we just look at the top side and the bottom side, which is AB to ED, they are parallel line segments, and they both have a distance of one. So we could consider the figure formed by those four points, a, B, and E, D. So one of the ways of characterizing a parallelogram is to have a figure where we have two opposite sides, which are parallel and of equal length, just like this. So if we take a look at the figure A to B and D to E, and if we join that together is a parallelogram, what we learn is that this line here will be parallel to B, D. So A to E is parallel to B to D. And this is really interesting because what it enables the frog to do is to almost look into the future. So if we start the frog at A, and if he wonders where I will be after four jumps, you know, you can see he doesn't have to look on any electronic map. What he can do is simply go ahead and imagine a line from A going all the way down, parallel to the line from B to D, and see where it meets the circle. And as you can see, that's where he's going to land at E after four jumps. So now if the frog now launches from E and does another four jumps, where do you think it's going to end up? Well, as you can see, it's going to end up back home at A, and that's from eight, eight jumps. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So doing this carefully and slowly, the frog is now sitting 
at position E. He then jumps one, he jumps one, and you can see we've got a parallelogram down here, and then jumps to B, jumps to A, and that's another parallelogram there. For the exact same reasons as before, if we were to put a vertical line from A coming to down E, that means that we're dealing with the same vertical line. So indeed, when you launch from E, you end up at A after four jumps at where you did start. So viewing the situation from when you actually started is eight jumps and you're forced to come back home. And again, as mentioned, there are multiple ways of getting this problem solved. We've done it by using a geometric diagram. And if you know about vectors, you could simply do it through vectors as well, or even complex numbers, you could go ahead and use them instead. So this is a beginning of a wider story. And let's see if I can give you another element to think about here. So here's the assembled diagram of four of all of the eight points. So now it's a little bit more that is true. And I'll just go ahead and add on my vertical line from A to E as well. What happens when the frog starts from one of the new points? Well, what you'll notice is that it will bounce from the same path as it did with the eight positions from before. Well, it bounces around the same path of length eight, coming back from eight steps to where it was at the beginning. And the argument for the existence of the vertical line repeats for them. So they are on a vertical line as well. But there are other things that you could do. For example, instead of having the circle and the line as your launch and your landing points, you could have two circles. Or you could merely have two lines which are askew, or two lines which are parallel, or two lines that are mutually perpendicular. So there's a lot to investigate to dive into as well. But I hope this question was clear, and I hope it's given you a better insight into how this would work when you're proving this point. With that in mind, that brings us to the end of our session for today. Congratulations once again on completing the Matt Olympiad test paper question. If you want more thrilling questions and want to enhance your problem solving abilities, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And remember, every problem is an opportunity to grow. Just as I showed this geometric pattern today, don't forget to attempt multiple methods like going through this in a vector format or by using more complex numbers. Keep exploring and keep learning. Until next time, happy problem solving.